How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue, here again. Today we're going to look at factors affecting solubility. So our objectives will be to explain how various factors affect solubility, including pressure, type of attractive force, and temperature. And we're going to include Henry's Law for pressure stuff, and uh, we're going to predict the degree of solubility for various solutes and various solvents based on their knowledge of each attractive force. Basically, hey, here's two molecules. Which one's going to be more soluble in water? Which one's going to be more soluble in hexane? Uh, so let's talk about solute solvent interactions. We know that like dissolves like and what does that even mean? It means that solutes with similar attractive forces to the solvent are going to be more soluble So polar solutes more soluble in polar solvents, right? So here's a little this is what goes on in my brain, right? We got methanol polar molecule. He's like, yo, are you polar too? And water's like, you know, I am that's awesome. We should totally hang and Methanol's like agreed and then they're gonna hang out. They're soluble in each other They're gonna hang out and party and everything's a good time like dissolves like Right, but what if it was a little different here? I got hexane Hexane's nonpolar. Look at that. That's a nonpolar molecule and hexane's like yo, you want to hang out water and water is like Nah, I'd rather hang out with my polar friends Pff, Whatever Right, so they're not gonna be soluble in each other because they have different attractive forces because they have different polarities. So the stronger the solute solvent interactions are, the more soluble it's going to be. So water is a very, very commonly used solvent, right? It's a universal solvent. All life really happens in water as far as we know. Um, so water molecules are polar and they have hydrogen bonding. So solutes that are also polar will be soluble, especially if they have hydrogen bonding or an opportunity to make one. So here we have uh, what's it, propanone. And we see because there's an oxygen here, it can make a hydrogen bond there. So we expect propanone to be soluble in water. All right, if the solute and solvents are both liquids, right? Let's say I have two liquids, one's water, the other one is, I don't know, alcohol. I'm talking about if they mix or not, we have special vocab. Miscible means liquids will combine in all proportions. Basically, they're soluble completely with each other. And then we have immiscible which means liquids that won't combine. So you think oil and water, they're immiscible. You do all you want, oil and water are not gonna dissolve, right? Because it's a nonpolar thing. So talking about oil and water. So we know that water has really strong intermolecular attractive forces. There's hydrogen bonding there, so there's strong solvent-solvent interactions. But if we look, well, how's water gonna interact with the solute? Oil's very nonpolar. So it's not gonna really wanna interact with the water, which means it's not gonna dissolve. Water's gonna rather hang out with other water molecules and it is gonna wanna hang out with the oil particles, right? So if we are looking at molecules, sometimes they're so large that you need to kind of examine different regions of them to figure out how they're gonna interact with the solvent. Uh, so parts of the molecule may be polar, but other parts, parts aren't. Uh, as the similarity to the solvent decreases, so does the solubility. So if you take a look at this molecule, we got methanol. Uh, we, it's a polar molecule. It's really small. There's hydrogen bonding available there. Uh, so you would say almost this entire thing, it's polar molecule, right? If we get ethanol, it's a little bit bigger. We start to add some nonpolar sections onto it, but it's still really uh, polar overall. So it's infinitely soluble in water. Uh, but if we keep getting a little bigger now, this nonpolar region is starting to predominate the molecule and we see it's not infinitely polar, it's still pretty polar or pretty soluble. It's not infinitely soluble though. And if we get even bigger, hey, this whole region is really nonpolar and we just kind of have a polar end and you see the solubility for that molecule is almost nothing. If we change the solvent though, we also change its solubility. So let's say instead of using water, we used hexane as a solvent. Well, the solubilities would flip. So if I'm talking about solubilities under hexane, this first one that's really polar, not soluble, right? You wouldn't expect that to uh, dissolve in hexane, but the bottom one over here, you would, yeah, you go, hey, that's a pretty much entirely nonpolar except for that very end. So I would say that that's anticipated to be soluble. All right, pressure effects. The solubility of gaseous solutes increases as its partial pressure increases. Uh, right, so we have this equilibrium. We still have liquid uh, dissolved, or I'm sorry, gaseous particles being dissolved, but then they're also leaving, become just a gas, but we also have some of those gas particles redissolving. So we got this equilibrium. And what's gonna happen if we increase the pressure? Well, it's like we're forcing more of those gas particles to interact with the liquid which means more of it is gonna dissolve, right? Um, so if you take a look, 
compared to the top. The top is low pressure. The bottom one is showing high partial pressure. And you can see the solubility changes as well, right? If you have more gas, a higher pressure gas, it's interacting with the solvent more. You expect more of it to dissolve. So the more gas you have over the solvent, the more gas is gonna end up dissolved in the solvent. Uh, solid solutes not gonna be affected by pressure, all right? So mathematically, we got this Henry's law shown in this equation, whereas SG is the solubility of the gas, K is the Henry's law gas constant. Usually it's like molar per whatever unit of pressure. So for example, it could be molar per atmosphere. Uh, and then we also have P little g, which means it's the partial pressure of that gas. Basically, you know, it's the equation saying that, hey, if you double the partial pressure of the gas, its solubility is also going to double. So here's an example problem. Carbonated beverages have carbon dioxide gas dissolved in them. And CO2 has a Henry's law constant of 0 0.034 uh, at room temperature, and so it is bottled at four atmospheres of pressure. What is the solubility of carbon dioxide under these conditions? And let's, let's stop there. It's a two-part question. So the solubility of that gas is going to equal the gas constant times the partial pressure of that gas. So under bottling conditions, well, let's see, we get 0 0.034. Um, molar per atmosphere times four atmospheres. The atmosphere is going to cancel out. We end up with uh, 0.136 molar would be its concentration when it's bottled under pressure. Follow-up question is what would the solubility be after the soda is opened? Well, it's the same equation, but instead, this time, the pressure isn't four atmospheres. It's only one atmosphere. So we end up with 0 0.034 molar, which means when we open it, we go from being a high concentration to a low. Where is that carbon dioxide going to go? It's not going to precipitate out like a solid does. It's going to bubble up like a gas would, right? So you all know this. You open up a bottle of soda, and what happens to all that extra dissolved CO2? It forms bubbles, and there you go. Pretty So temperature effects. As temperature increases, the solubility of solids are going to increase, but gases are gonna decrease, all right? So if you take a look at the solubility curve chart, the ones that have a negative slope that decrease as temperature goes up, those are our gases. The rest of them are solids. So a way to think about it. We have these solid par particles that need to be broken apart by the solvent. At low temperatures, water doesn't have a whole lot of energy, right? Low temperature, low energy, they get attracted to these ions. And now, in order to dissolve them, they gotta break them apart. But the water just doesn't have that energy. Whereas if we heat them up, now these particles have got a whole lot of energy, and when they go and interact with the salt particles, yeah, now they got enough energy to break apart those ions. So the solubility increases. If we think about it for gases, well, gases like to spread out and be in the gas phase. They're not so happy being dissolved. So as temperature increases, those gaseous solutes now have more energy and is more likely to get out of there. They have the energy to escape, right? So low energy, they're kind of stuck in that solution. They're being held in, they're dissolved. But if you gave them more energy, heating them up, hey, now they got enough energy to be like, yo, we're out of here. So the solubility goes down. And if you think about it, you know, what happens to warm soda? You leave your soda out there for too long, it goes flat, all right? It becomes flat. There's no more carbon dioxide dissolved in it because the solubility went down because it got warmer. So summarize, can you explain how the various factors affect solubility, including pressure, type of attractive forces, and temperatures, including using Henry's law? Uh, and can you predict the degree of solubility for various solutes and various solvents based on their knowledge of each attractive force? I hope so. I hope it's been helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.